we we try to understand um, what predetermines or predisposes patient to have venous stenosis with IIH and venous stenosis with passatile tinnitus alone. Um, and we looked at features on MRI scan, we looked at the type of stenosis, we, we looked at the length of stenosis, um, and what we, what we correlated this likelihood is that the presence of a long segment, you know, what we consider like as an extrinsic stenosis, is predominantly seen in patients with IIH, and the short segment intrinsic stenosis is predominantly associated with passatile tinnitus. And this is not like one-to-one. -one. Again, it's higher likelihood for each group, and there is some overlap, but this is the analysis we had at the time. And uh, um, other factors like, uh, you know, having an empty cella, for example, or having um, uh, tortuous or marked optic nerves um, has, has some input, but not, not, not as strong. So the type of stenosis helps correlate with the patient's symptoms, and um, that's that's an information that uh, you know we we offer out there. And this this is an example of um, predominant. This is from the same publication, like a long segment stenosis, uh, the brain parenchyma uh, compressing the vein against uh, the skull. Uh, this is predominantly IIH population versus the more focal stenosis intrinsic, like an arachnoid granulation, like this filling defect uh, in, the, in the venous sinus, more associated with, with passatile tinnitus. Again, there is some overlap. This is not 100%, but uh, it's, it's a good correlation.